JBS's The Jake Ehrenreich Show is brought to you in part by Stephanie and Simon Bergson, The Skolnick Family Charitable Trust, Helene and Barry Lewis, Judy Friedman and Ron Goldstock, in honor of Hyas, Jonathan Fershpan, The Memory of Nadzia and Milton Bergson, Nira and Ken Abramowitz, Cynthia and Jeffrey Weisenfeld, and by viewers like you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sarge. Thank you so much, Brianne. Thank you for that warm TV welcome. This show is too Jewish. Nothing like a whole bunch of Jews in a really small room with no air conditioning. What could go wrong? As long as no one's constipated, we're in good shape. I just came from uh, L.A. where I did a, a show with a lot of Jews. 1,400 Hasidic rabbis. Not a dry cleaner for 5,000 miles. Looked like an entire ballroom of medieval chess pieces. And they were good enough to fly me in from Florida, where I'm from, Florida. Five flights with a layover in Holland. It was fantastic. Every Chabad kicked in one air mile. It was wonderful. That's right, I came from Florida because there wasn't enough chance of dying on the Upper East Side, so I moved to Florida. Florida is the world's largest defensive driving class. I don't know if you've been there. This is where people who have no hearing, no vision, no memory, no feeling in their hands or feet, no ability to turn their head this way or this way, no idea where they're going or who they are, and they're driving 80 miles an hour in reverse. Florida is the only place on the planet where you hear this announcement at the airport. Well, the two people who can walk on the plane, the two people who can get on the plane under their own power, please report to the podium. Also, the six Jews faking a limp to get on with the handicapped people. We have 371 wheelchairs. Today we won't be boarding by group number, we'll be boarding by ailment. If you're suffering from any of these things, please report to the podium. Shingles, clay stool, dark urine, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, dry mouth, dry scalp, dry crotch, dry everything, early onset dementia. Please report to the podium. So it's good to see you on this very Jewish show. So I'm doing the thing for the rabbis and uh, one of them came over to me and he says, are you the comedian? I said, yes, I'm the only one not in a fur hockey puck hat. What was your first clue? <laughs> the jokes are funny to me too, ladies and gentlemen. I lived it. He says, listen, listen, listen. I said, no, no, I can hear you. I'm right here. You flew me in. I have wooden shoes and chocolate now. He said, no, no, come closer. I said, no, 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 I can tell you had herring with onions for lunch. It was wonderful. Maybe an Altoid. He said, what's an Altoid? I said, it's like a hemorrhoid, but mintier. He said, no, 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 come, come, come. I said, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Just tell me what you want. He said, listen, listen, listen. Don't talk about anything political, nothing sexual, nothing about relationships, nothing about manufacturing, nothing about the diamond business, nothing about computers, nothing about the weather, nothing about traffic, nothing about people, movies, television, nothing! So I said, well, Rabbi, that doesn't leave much. Why did you hire a comedian? He says, we like to laugh. I said, you should have booked a full-length mirror. You'd be hysterical right now. So what are you gonna do? I said, I'll do my Haftarah, and then I'll leave. He says, you got a Haftarah? I said, I'm black and Jewish. We only had half a Torah. The first half I'll do that, and the other half I'll read from Uncle Tom's Cabin. So I'm a black Jew, as I previously referenced. I'm not all the way black. I'm actually beige. My father pulled out. No, so I told you I'm a black Jew, and I should explain it because it's not just some comic gimmick. I'm me here, do you understand? I'm not hiding behind some shtick. I'm really black and Jewish. My birth mother was an Orthodox Hasidic girl studying to be a doctor in Chicago. Somehow, she became pregnant from a black man. 
or the orthodox story, which was she sat on a bench near a basketball court without <laughs> panties. So, you know what, Jake? Tell Tova, don't, tell Tova, Tova felt you. Tell her she doesn't have to come down. I got this. <laughs> tell her her show is 30 blocks south of here. It's called Broadway. You understand? I need this show. You understand? I need this little presidium. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. My thank friend, you. Son. Thank you. Thank you. you know. <laughs> Is this Jewish enough? I'm playing Avinu Malkano. <laughs> you know, I would, I would love to have Sarge do this for an hour. But then... But then you'd never get a chance to know him for real. And he's a wonderful person. I just finished reading his book. Um, put up, put up the, the, the book here. Black Boy Chick. Um, it's called Black, Black Boy Chick. Look at that. Black Boy Chick. <laughs> And I will tell you, no kidding, if you're looking for a good book to read, my book, A Jew Grows in Brooklyn, is an excellent read. Much better. And when you finish that, Much you can read better. Black Boy Much better than I actually Jew Grows in Brooklyn. I want you to show a picture of Sarge and his mom. I haven't had a bris yet. Is there a rabbi here? Are you ready for this? I was adopted, and they told me I was white. Got the biggest laugh of the night. That's how thick Jewish people's denial is. Do you understand? We can hold a grudge and be in denial. Just think about this, Purim. Haman's been dead for thousands of years. We still get together to boo him every year. And his plot didn't even succeed. Do you understand? My mother told me I was white, and I thought I was white. It's nature, nurture. As it turns out, I'm mixed. But throughout the course of my life, because of political correctness, think about this. When I was born, I was Negro. Then I was colored, like a crayon. <laughs> this is how political correctness has traced itself. I recently turned 50, thank you very much. <laughs> and even more recently, I turned 57. <laughs> so... <laughs> I was Negro, then I was colored, then they called us mulatto, which is way before Starbucks. But you think about it. <laughs> I was a mulatto, cappuccino, frappe grande. We were mulatto, then we were African-American, then we were Afro-American, then we were brown, then there was a lot of Puerto Ricans that came, then we became black, and now, because of political correctness, I'm no longer colored, I'm a person of color, which is much less offensive. <laughs> so to find out how black and Jewish I really am, I did this thing with technology, 23 and Me. have you done this? I spit in the thing. Which is, you know, there's all kinds of modern technology now. You can find out any of your bodily functions. You can send it somewhere. Like they have this cola guard thing. You poop in a box. <laughs> and you send it in. And you don't have to go to the proctologist anymore. Which is actually kind of a come down because uh, I liked going. He did things I couldn't get my wife to do. So now I poop in a box and it's over. So I spit in a thing. 23 in me. I spit in the thing. And the report came back, it says I am 69% Ashkenazi, 31%, who belched? 69% Ashkenazi, 31% Cameroonian West African. And this is very comforting to find out this information. How black, how Jewish, right? Am I right? Because people have been asking. I mean, so now I understand a lot of things I've been doing my entire life. I'm 31% Cameroonian, West African. Now I understand. Many mornings I would wake up, go in the backyard, and just start making a canoe. <laughs> Had no idea why. The phone would ring. I, you know, I'm answering. But the best one is that for my entire life, you know, Jews are very subtle. Think about this. Black and Jewish, all my relatives were slaves at some point. Now, think about this. Now, I'm not going to be politically incorrect. I'm going to let you finish the idea in your own mind. Of the black slaves and the Jewish slaves, who do you think were the more annoying slaves? <laughs> think about it. Think, I mean, you know. 
The blacks, they were very, very compliant. They went, they whipped, they picked cotton, they sang Broadway show. Oh, man, River. They were out there. They put in their best effort. Jews were, it's hot, it's hot. You think he'd give us a decent sandal? So, it's important to know what you are. You know, I mean, you're. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm hot. Jeez. <laughs> the next season, we're going to have air conditioning, am I right? It's a nonprofit station. All right, so. all right. So that means it needs to be hot. But, the, the, you know, I mean, so you're hysterical. You really grew up. So what did you call yourself when you were growing up? They're telling you you're, you're white? You have nobody telling you anything any, any different? I didn't what want did people to notice the way I looked. <laughs> so I, I tried to entertain them so I could distract them. The way a magician has his hand over here and he's going into his pocket. Um, Personality-wise, um, that's what I tried to do because I was, you know, it wasn't a good time to be either, it's never been a good time to be black or Jewish. I mean, think about it. Everything you hate, all in one person. You know, it's like a one-man racial quota. Um, but, um, you know, I get twice as many rejection letters from country clubs. No. No, no, Sammy Davis had to go through his whole career, you know, the black Jewish thing, and he sang his way out of it. He didn't have punchlines. See, I was born with punchlines, black and Jewish. I shoplift, but just wholesale. <laughs> this is so easy. Black and Jewish. Jewish part doesn't work on Shabbos. Black part tries not to work the other six days. You see what I mean? My first job, every time I went to my father for money, he would give me a speech. How many people remember that one? Why do I look like I'm made of money? Why do you think we have a money tree? Why do you need a dollar? I'm planting trees in Israel, I told him. I was in Israel last year, six city tour. Didn't see one tree for three and a half weeks. I was looking for my trees. First opportunity to get a job, my father said, you're 16 years old. He says, you're getting a job. So I said, where are we going? He says, I'll take you to A&S uh, department store. Sure. You're a schwatzer. Tell them you want to you you know, you want to push a broom. He says, you're, a, you're half schwatzer. You're good at sweeping. <laughs> so I walked into A&S, and I said to the woman, uh, I'm, I'm half schwatzer. <laughs> Give me a broom. She said, oh my god, you're adorable. You must do other things. I said, of course I do. But for your intents and purposes, I need a broom. My father said I should sweep. She says, I only have a job in women's shoes. I said, I'll take it. And that's where she put me. And this is where I learned the difference between Jews and Gentiles. Gentile people are lovely. <laughs> Whether you have what they want or not, they are delightful. They, they <laughs> greet you. They say, good morning. You don't have what I need. Thank you very much. And, they, and the reason why Gentiles are so much lovelier than us is because they go to church every week and confess. They go there, they sing some hymns, they, they, they have a little wine with the guy, then they go in a booth with, you know, with a, with a, with a pedophile and have, you know. <laughs> Jews don't go to temple for 11 months and 28 days, and then they show up for 90 consecutive hours while starving. <laughs> so she puts me in women's shoes, woman starts yelling at me, and I know she's Jewish because she's yelling at me. I haven't met her yet. I see the six and I see the eight. I don't see the seven. And I have an affair. So I said, does your husband know? <laughs> now remember, I'm 16. Why don't I see the seven? I said, at this ANS, we only sell even numbered sizes. <laughs> what are my options? I said, well, you could get sweat socks and buy the eight. <laughs> or you could go to Queens. There's a Chinese doctor that'll bind your feet. <laughs> and you can buy the six. She says, I don't think that's funny. I said, it will be when I tell an audience in 40 years. <laughs> Wait, it gets better. <laughs> now comes the part which is completely indigenous of Jewish life. Gentile people never ask you to go in the back. Jews always do. Jews live in a constant state of mistrust that you are holding out on them, that there's a secret stash of merchandise you don't want to sell them, that you have their size in a box hidden from view. So the woman says to me, can you check in the back? So I said, ma'am, there are no shoes in the back. There's only former shoe salesmen who've hung themselves in the back. Check 
back in the back, and I want to talk to the manager of shoes. I said, okay, just to humor her, I said, I'm going in the back. I went in the back, counted to 20, I came out. I said, I'm so sorry. The manager of shoes is a transvestite, and he's wearing the last pair of sevens. <laughs> you know. I got fired. I got fired. Wait a second. I got fired. And the worst part of it is I had to tell my father. I had to say, Dad, I got fired for my first job. He said, that's all right. Your schwatz has washed dishes, too. Go to a restaurant. So he takes me to a restaurant. Wait a second. This is the best, and then you can get back to whatever you don't know about me. <laughs> he takes me in the middle of my hometown of Great Neck. I was born in Great Neck. Oh, Raised in Great Neck. Great Neck is a Yiddish term which translated means, I'm better than you. <laughs> he drops me off in town, and there's a restaurant in the middle of town called Millie's Place. Oh, yeah. Some people. So, I walk in, and I said, I'd like to speak to Millie, please. She said, speaking. I said, perfect. Are you thoroughly and modern? <laughs> Perfectly honest question. She says, you are adorable. What are you here for? I said, I'm parched vatsa. I want to wash dishes. <laughs> she says, I wouldn't think of putting you in the kitchen. I want you on the floor. I said, right now? <laughs> Give me some time to, you know, a little foreplay. I'm 16. I don't even know what I can do. I need you to wait tables. I have a hard time holding on to waiters because I have a very, very big Jewish clientele and they have a tendency to kill themselves after their shift. <laughs> Waiting on Jews is no easy thing. I said, I'll take it. The Jewish part of me grew up with these people. I love them. The black part will kick their ass if it's a problem. <laughs> she puts me on the floor. What I learned, Gentile people are lovely. <laughs> they will eat anything you put in front of them and they will not complain. You can poop in a dish and they'll say, these truffles are delicious. <laughs> Jews aren't happy unless they've sent something back seven to 300 times, which almost ensures there will be mucus in the food, which is why so many Jews have bronchial problems. It's third party mucus from food that gets sent back. Nothing is okay at the table. The first thing when they come in, the table is shickling. Can you get a matchbook? The butter's too hard, the butter's too soft, the ice is the wrong shape, my plates are the wrong color, the ceiling's too high, the floor, the vinyl sticks to my tuchus, the menu's sticky, the fork is flat, I need another kind of spoon. There's a draft. Do you feel that there's a draft? Every Jew feels a draft. You could put a Jew on death row in solitary confinement, and they will, within 15 minutes, call the warden, there's a draft in my cell. I'm not spending a life sentence with a draft. What happened to the black bread? You got black, we like the black bread. Black bread, there's no black bread? Why is there no black bread? This is why waiters kill themselves. So I'm there, I go to the table. There's a Jewish, now I learned this very quickly. Jewish couple, under no circumstances should you ever talk to the man in the Jewish couple. <laughs> he is the most marginalized and beleaguered person on earth. He is one nap away from never waking up. <laughs> he has been told he's a schmuck and a moron over 3,000 times and that's just on the way over. He doesn't know where to park, he doesn't know where to drive, he's never wearing the right pants, the right shirt. He doesn't walk, he's breathing too loud. His neck, his posture's no good. He doesn't know what he wants to eat, and if he does, he can't have that. <laughs> Do not make eye contact with the Jewish man because he's in a hostage situation, <laughs> and he might try to get a message to you. Don't even look at him. So I come to the table, you, that's why you'll never see Jewish women with metal detectors at the beach. It's Jewish men looking for a gun so they can blow their head off at the beach because they can't do it at home because the cleaning girl was just here. So I asked the woman, I said, what would you folks like? She says, in the voice of the Aflac duck, she says, we would like two hot bowls of mushroom barley. Make sure it's hot like lava from an active volcano hot. 
Mushrooms on the side, barley on the side, carrots on the side, soup on the side. We eat out seven nights a week. I don't cook, but I like reassembling restaurant food. I said, well, that would be okay, except for today is tomato with rice. We came for the mushroom barley. I said, well, you came on the wrong day. If you like, I can keep some saran wrap over you and your husband until Tuesday. And you can sit here until we serve it again. Well, we had our hearts set on mushroom barley. I said, well, you should probably make a cardiologist appointment and have him reset it for tomato and rice. She says, I don't think that's funny. I said, it will be when I tell an audience. <laughs> well, can you check in the back? Man, there's no mushroom barley in the back. Check in the back! And I want to talk to the soup manager. So I went in the back just to humor her. I counted to 20. I came out. I said, I, I can't. The, the soup manager is having her lunch and I can't disturb her. She's enjoying the last bowl of mushroom barley soup. <laughs> you want more? What else can I do? What else can I do? What an honor.